Could you hear an impairment? And if you could hear it, how would you describe the impairment? While that's a little complicated, the most important thing is did you record the impairment so that you could play it back later on? Is there a cost-effective, efficient way that we can document a vocal impairment? Can this best be done with computers, numbers, and graphics? Would photos best capture a vocal impairment? How about a video recording? Perhaps without sound? Or perhaps with audio recorded simultaneously? I will make the case in this lecture that an audio recording is the most cost-effective, high-value way of documenting both a vocal impairment as well as any potential change in the voice before and after an intervention. How inexpensive is it? How many of you don't have a smartphone in your pocket? Several clinical practice guidelines could not find good scientific support for recording the voice. However, that's largely because the assessments reviewed describe the voice rather than actually record it or document its capabilities. The value of recording of vocal capabilities lies in the fact that it's basically a toolbox that gives you a panorama of the entire voice. By changing pitch and volume while recording, you can completely assess the voice. The examiner or any future listener of the recording can identify the typical characteristics of hoarseness, air leak, and diplophonia or polyphonia. And specific vocal tasks can generate other types of vibratory impairment. By altering the two main capabilities of the larynx, changing pitch and changing volume, the examiner can also elicit a vocal impairment when one is not heard during standard speech. By revealing which combination of pitch and volume elicit the vocal impairment, the examiner is then directed for how to record the larynx during endoscopy. And this provides essential documentation of how the voice changes either over time or before and after an intervention. When you identify a vocal problem on an audio recording, you will be able to see the vocal problem at the margins of the vocal fold on an endoscopic exam. Let's take a listen to a hoarse voice. I'm hearing air leak or white noise from turbulent airflow. That means we should see a gap in the vocal cords that never disappears while we're doing stroboscopy. That is, there's a continuous flow of air through that gap. Let's listen at a higher pitch. I'm still hearing air leak at this high pitch, so I would again expect to see a black hole on stroboscopy. That is, a spot where continuously air leaks out. Let's listen to another voice. I'm hearing two non-harmonic pitches simultaneously. That is diplophonia in this case, or some sort of polyphonia. So what should we see on stroboscopy? The strobe light is unable to track two pitches simultaneously, so we get an apparent fluttering of the vocal cords. Let's listen to low volume sound production at a high pitch. There's a phonatory stoppage. By singing a few notes, we can determine the exact pitch where sound cuts out. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. But if the individual increases the volume, the note comes out clearly. Happy birthday to you. And returning to low volume. Happy birthday to you. I can't get that bloody note out. And this will correspond visually with stroboscopy. Increasing pitch by tightening the cricothyroid muscle brings the edges of the vocal cords closer together. Marginal swellings that touch at low volume stop vibrations. Let's listen to a different finding on the same vocal task. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! There's a sudden doubling of pitch.
pitch break, often an octave, will correspond with cutting the vibratory segment in half. Let's watch and listen in slow motion. And if the segments are unequal in length, we get diplophonia. Audio findings direct our endoscopic exam. So for example, if we do a recording where we hear a pitch break and we don't see the problem initially, we need to reconcile that problem. We have a pitch break up high. I don't see the problem here and this is what I would call a typical endoscopic view a far away look at the larynx. However, if we topically anesthetize the larynx, we can get a much more detailed view. Even at this close range, I can't see the swelling that I heard in her vocal capabilities testing. With a very close look, there appears to be mucus accumulating in the mid portion of the vocal cords, and often this can hide a dampened vibration. If we clear the mucus and look extremely close, we can see two swellings and we can see how they stop the vocal cord vibration and allow air to leak. Hearing relatively little air leak at high pitch while hearing more significant air leak at low pitch should clue us into a vocal weakness. <coughs> Yet at first glance the vocal cords appear to close completely. We don't see the gap that we heard. So if we now visualize the vocal cords in their entirety at the pitches where we heard the problem, we will find the problem. After topical anesthesia, we can view the vocal cords in their entirety, and we can identify a right lateral cricorytenoid muscle weakness by viewing them at low, middle, and high pitches, and see that the compensation from the cricothyroid muscle hides the gap. In another example, if we record a high, comfortable speaking pitch compensation from cricothyroid muscle. Long ago, man found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. And a very weak low pitch. <laughs> and a relatively clearer high pitch. <laughs> we know there should be a weakness. Our audio recording tells us not to look only at high pitch because we'll miss the problem. Pretty good chord closure at this pitch. But at low pitch we can visually document the problem we recorded on the audio testing. And when we re-record her comfortable speaking pitch after an implant, we can hear the difference. Long ago, man found that it was easier long ago man found out that it was easier to travel let's take a listen to an individual's reading voice before and after a surgery long ago men found that it was easier to travel on water than on land long ago men found that it was easier to travel on water than on land and then her lowest note before and after surgery e e e e in this transgender female who underwent a feminization laryngoplasty, you get a lot more information from listening to the actual voice and the actual lower pitch than you would from a set of numbers. Additionally, someone else could analyze these voice segments and come to their own conclusion about the effectiveness of the surgery. A complete audio recording of an individual's vocal capabilities provides a cost-effective and high-value way of eliciting the vocal problem, predicting where to look on endoscopic examination, and documenting the problem for future comparison.